an awesome day of playing around on the mines. There's one thing about the Gemini, it's a fun vehicle. Everything about it is fun. Just driving it is fun, playing around with it is fun. Everything becomes an adventure. It's just one of those vehicles. But this is a video you guys have been waiting for for quite some time. And I think you're gonna really enjoy this. Today, we are doing full walk around on the Jimny. All the little details, the little additions, the extras, where I've put stuff, why I've put it there. It's gonna be a long one. So get yourself something nice to drink, get yourself some snacks. I'm gonna go and get this baby cleaned up and I'll see you again shortly. Okay, so we are back. The Jimny is all cleaned up and I've got it loaded out how I would use it while out in the bush. Now, obviously I've gone for the ultimate micro overlander setup here. So I've got the extra water, I've got the extra fuel. We have a rooftop tent, an awning. We've got a fridge, we've got all the accessories anyone could possibly need for a Jimny. Now, this build started a year and seven months ago. And it was something that, for me personally, was an experiment. I wanted to see, could you take a tiny vehicle like this and turn it into a overlander? And that would mean pushing this little vehicle to its limit. So what is the vehicle? The vehicle is a 2018 Suzuki Jimny 1.5 petrol engine GLX spec. So it's got all the bells and whistles, the fancy LED lights, the infotainment system, all of the nice little gadgets. And it has stayed stock for maybe a week. But you guys have been waiting a really long time for me to finally do a walk around of the Jimny. And there are lots of little details and lots of modifications that have been done over the whole year and seven months of building this vehicle out. So I'm hoping that today I'm going to be able to walk you around, show you all the little details and hopefully answer a lot of your questions. So let's get to it. Okay, so we have to start at the front of the vehicle. And I think probably also with most people's favorite upgrade to the Jimny. And that's got to be the Wild Dog front bumper replacement. Now, this thing transformed the look of the vehicle the first day it went on and it was really awesome to be involved in the process of seeing it be designed from a, the 3D scanning of the vehicle to throughout most of the manufacturing process actually. And it just really gives the vehicle quite a unique look. Now, I love the fact that I've got here my little Osram MX140, I think they are the SPs. Um, these guys are also super bright and they are actually the same power intensity as the high beam. So when you have the high beams on and these guys on at the same time, it gives a really nice even spread of light and the color is very good as well. They're not too blue. They're very quality products. They are E-rated lights as well. I do also have some little Hella spotlights here that come with the Wild Dog bumper. They are, they're all right. Um, I would say they are bright, but they're also quite difficult to aim properly in the bumper. So I had a little bit of trial and error getting them to point in the right direction. I would love to put some amber lights in here or something like that. Um, I think there's a pretty generic um, hole here, so I think you could put some different lights in if you did want to. But they work great. And when I've got all the lights fired up, I can see plenty. <laughs> so a lot of you have asked if I have a winch uh, no, I do not have a winch on here. I didn't necessarily get the time to get to the point of installing one. I would have liked to. But if you want to know what this bumper can actually hold, it doesn't hold a normal full-size winch. You have to put in an ATV winch. Those can get to about a four and a half thousand pound winch, which would do the trick with the Jimny, especially if you, um, you know, double the pulling power with a snatch block or something like that. It, it would work pretty well. Now, I get asked loads of questions about the tires. It's probably one of the most asked questions about the Jimny. What size tires do I have? What tires am I using? So here I have the BF Goodridge K1 
KO2 all-terrain tires. Now, these are in a 215-7515. They are tough as nails. They've been everywhere around Southern Africa with me and they have lasted really well. Um, but I, I think they're a bit heavy and I think they're a bit hard for the Jimny and I honestly feel like there are better tires out there for the Jimny. What they are, I can't tell you because I've never used them, but I feel like you could get a better balance of vehicle stability, fuel consumption and off-road performance. But the BFG KO2s have really proved themselves worthy tires for this ultimate micro overlander. Another great addition, the Wild Dog Rock Sliders slash Sidestep. Now, something that's been really handy with these is just like that, being able to just access the roof, get stuff on the roof, even we've had to use it in cases where uh, going through really tricky obstacles where you actually need somebody to hold on and kind of pull the vehicle <laughs> and to keep the vehicle stable while off-roading in really hectic terrain. So they've definitely proven themselves, they've definitely protected the dorsal from rocks and things like that as well. They've been an invaluable addition to the vehicle. We also have a new addition to the gym and that is the Bush Tech Goalwing. Now, this is something I've been super excited about. We recently developed this alongside Bushtech and basically to get use of this tiny little cupboard here, which is actually pretty big, considering I can fit a full-size Flexo Power Lithium 444 in here. This is a 48 amp hour lithium battery with built-in 400 watt inverter and everything. So I can charge my camera batteries, my walkie talkies, torches, all sorts of things like that. It's also chargeable via solar. So this is the, uh, so the cable to connect to the solar panel on the back. And this right now is this one setup. So it's being used for obviously power, charging, all of that stuff. This is my daily kind of setup for when I'm going to photo shoots or film shoots or whatever. I've always got all my stuff charged up. But you could just as easily transform this into a kitchen unit, hence it's under the awning, or a recovery cupboard, something like that. So you've got loads of options for how you might want to use this. You might even come up with some of your own options. So this, is, this has been really nice. I've really enjoyed using this and it looks badass. When we get to the rear, one, another big statement piece for this vehicle was obviously the Wild Dog full replacement rear bumper. Now it does have rated recovery points, and they are directly connected to the chassis. So it's gonna be much stronger than using the factory recovery point. We do also have, obviously, the tail light has been replaced here by an LED tail light. These are also from Hella. So they all kind of match the front spotlights. Now we did also go ahead and install the tow hitch on here. None of the wiring has been run or anything like that, but you know, there is the you know, would be the possibility of towing a little trailer or something like that. Personally, it's not necessarily something I want to do, but it is there. It gives you an additional recovery point and I guess a little bit of protection from, the, from behind. I don't know, I'm not too sure. But either way, it's, you know, that's a great look. I love the accent, the red accent on the shackles and stuff like that. And Wild Dog put a lot of attention to detail into the design of all these bumpers and the rock sliders and everything like that. So now another necessity I feel is obviously having a set of max tracks. Now I used to have a set of cheap Chinese recovery tracks and they were really long definitely for bigger vehicles and they would constantly get in the way that either you know go so far here that you couldn't open the door or they'd be so long here that you could you know it would hide your number plate or if you put it at an angle it would cover a brake light or an indicator so it just it was such a problem and I decided you know what let me just spend the money and get a proper set of Max Tracks. Now, you guys will know I did get stuck in the Makati Cutty pans because those long tracks were such a mission that I didn't take them with me and look at what happened. So now, any trip I go on with the Jimny, you know, these little guys come with me. Now, another little addition we have is the um, Easy On K9 Ladder. This is just an easier way to get up onto the roof if you need to get onto the roof rack to you know, get firewood or maybe you need a bit of assistance putting the tent away or something like that. It's just there to help out. It also looks awesome. 
Now there is quite a large lump on <laughs> the roof rack here and for some of you that don't know this is a fold out rooftop tent. So once you take this cover off there's a tent underneath there that comes over the back tailgate here and then there's is a ladder that you climb up to get into the tent and it keeps you elevated off the ground it really helps if you're uh you know afraid of animals and uh, bugs and things like that it's just nice to be up off the ground at night and you know i find i get a good night's sleep it's got a foam mattress inside there that's already in there and you can actually leave some of your sleeping stuff in there as well um, so you don't have to worry about you know packing your sleeping bags and stuff in the car every day you can actually just leave them in the rooftop tent which you know, saves you a little bit of time. Now I also have a table underneath here and it's a nice big table. This literally, this latch just slides up there. The table comes out and you've got yourself a nice table to have a meal at or, you know, you know, do some cooking or whatever you need. There's also two lights. I've got one here on the side and I've got one on the back. These are the Osram MX80 WDs and these are a widespread beam and essentially how I use these is for when I'm reversing in the dark or you know maneuvering around a campsite and I need a bit of extra light but as well as you can use them as a bit of a camp light if you just take it and kind of tilt it up into the deck of the rooftop tent that works pretty damn well. So now then on this side here we have the awesome the Easy On 2000 Series 2000 awning. Uh, this is a straight up awning it just comes all the way out it doesn't articulate around like the Batwing 270 uh, this is just a more kind of simple, sturdy, reliable option. Um, and it's a very affordable, and that's what I like about this. I love the black anodized you know, casing here, and it's a hard metal casing. It's been through some, some, some hell there with me, but it's holding up really well. And I think this is the type of product that lasts for years um, and has been invaluable in those times where you know, the temperatures are reaching 40 degrees and the sun is burning your flesh. So, you know, there's nothing as good as shade when you need it. But all of this is kind of supported by one of the most important things, the Easy On K9 rack. And what's incredible about this rack is all of the slats are welded together. It's super strong and it's rated to at around 750 kilograms, which once you add up the weight of all the accessories, you know, 40 kilos for the tent, 10 kilos for the awning, five kilos for the table, you have 40 kilos of water, 40 kilos of fuel, and then you put two people in the rooftop tent, the weight climbs up pretty damn quick. So I rate, you know, you need to be absolutely confident with the roof rack that you're putting on your vehicle. Because if you want to load it up, you need to be able to load it up. You know, you need, it needs to be safe, it needs to be sturdy, it needs to be rock solid. This thing is a part of the vehicle. This is not going anywhere. We've got eight feet, four on either side, to grip it to the vehicle so that all of that weight on it is distributed across eight points and easy on don't skimp on the width of the feet and the quality of the feet they they go hard here so what i like about that is i never had to worry even with all the weight and all the experimenting i've done with what you can load on a jimny you know it's held up really really well but while we're talking about that maybe we should chat about some of the downsides of putting weight on the roof Okay, so the next thing is quite a controversial topic and obviously the load rating of the Jimny's roof has been in debate since it was released. Now obviously I've tested it personally with multiple different setups with multiple different weights on the roof and I'm going to give you my honest opinion right now. So obviously on here I have a 40 litre water tank and I've got two 40 litre jerry cans. Personally, I wouldn't recommend people do this. I think this is a decision you have to make on your own. In your own steam, you have to weigh up the pros and cons and you have to accept the safety risk of putting that much weight on the roof of your vehicle. I, I don't condone it. I don't like the way the vehicle handles when, those, when these are full. I, I yeah. <laughs> so I do it because I needed to for the trips that I was going on. I needed the extra fuel, I needed the extra water. It was a necessity for where I was going and what I was doing. Would I recommend people do it? No. Can the Jimny handle it? Barely, 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 barely. I, I, I strongly suggest that people do a little bit of research and things like that if they are, put it this way, learn from my mistakes. If you're gonna be doing, planning on doing really long trips, don't buy a Jimny. 
because this is the only way you can get your liquid to come with you and it's not safe. Um, if it comes to not having this, I would rather not have this on. If I'd rather just do shorter trips that don't require as much fuel, that don't require as much water, and you can just carry maybe a 10 litre water in the vehicle with you and stop at shops and things like that to get water. Um, this water tank saved my life in the Kalahari, in the Makari Kari. It was worth it. It was worth it. But here's the rule. If you're going to put these on, and with the Jimny, the fuel, the fuel canisters are pretty much non-negotiable. So if you're going to put them on, do not fill them up when you leave on your trip. I know it feels good and I know it feels satisfying that oh, I'm ready to go on my trip. I've got everything loaded up and I'm ready to go. Don't. You only fill those jerry cans when you get to the point where you know you're not gonna get fuel. Then that last petrol stop, that's when you fill up the jerry cans. That's when you fill up your water. That's when you do that stuff. Otherwise, keep these empty. You do not wanna be driving on the highway on your long drive to get to your destination with 80 kilos of liquid weight on the roof. I promise you, you feel it. You feel it. The car sways quite dramatically at times. And if you go over a little bump here, remember you got solid axles, right? And when one wheel goes up, the other wheel goes down. It moves like this. So now you take that and you compound that with all the additional weight on the roof. It gets quite hectic. But what I will say, and I will say quite confidently, the Jimny can handle with upgraded suspension. I do not recommend putting much weight on the roof at all with standard suspension, but with upgraded suspension, we're going to get to the suspension now. I think the Jimny can pretty much quite comfortably handle 60 kilos on the roof, quite comfortably. Um, at the moment, when I have the, the tent, the table, and the awning, and the roof rack, I think it comes to around 75 kilos. And it's totally fine when driving around town. The second I put these guys on, then it's a different story. It's a different story. So that's my recommendation for the rooftop stuff. Let's get on to talking about the suspension. Okay, so one of my favorite things about the vehicle and also one of the biggest transformations for me in terms of driving the vehicle has been suspension. And what I've got in here is I have a kit from Dissolve 4x4. They use the Gabriel Safari HDP shock absorber and then they make their own coils, caster correction, pan hard, and they're even working on new radial arms now for the Jimny. So they kind of take the stock suspension and they just can it. Um, look, it gives you a 50 mil lift, it gives you a much better loading capacity, and it's also a much more confident drive on the road. You're not swaying when you're going around the corners and it handles all of this weight really well. It's been a really nice kit. I've very much so enjoyed it. And it's given me a lot of respect for, first of all, the Gabriel Safari HDP shock absorbers, which are great. And I've really grown fond of the lime green color. I know it's a bit kitsch sometimes and not everybody likes it, but with this vehicle, it suited it and it performs really, really well. Um, any changes to it? Personally, I would like to get the caster correction kit installed on the Jimny and I'd love to get the pan hard adjuster kit. Uh, essentially, all that's gonna do is just improve the road dynamics and your suspension geometry, which gets altered when you lift the vehicle by 50 mils. So that would be the thing, DeSol have it. Um, it's just be getting my hands on it. So that's something I definitely wanna do. Okay, so I've packed this up for how I would go on a trip. So we've got the fridge in here, I've got a clothing bag, I've got the little boxes here, and some chairs and stuff there. And I'm gonna kind of show you how, a little bit how I pack the vehicle, but also talk about some of the equipment that's made packing the vehicle so much easier than when I first got the vehicle. Now, this is a new addition to the vehicle. You, you may recognize these slides. These are the Bushtech kind of fridge slides, but these are the latest version. So this is the version that if anyone was to buy these, this is the version they'd get. We've got super heavy duty slides. These are capable of holding up to 180 kilograms. The vehicle and the suspension moves before the slide moves. Now these also, this little yellow tab here is a lock. These lock in and out. So you can see now, I'm gonna push it back. The fridge is moving, because obviously I don't have it tied down properly at the moment, but the drawer itself is super solid. And that 
is very cool. It's when you're driving around, that everything is secured properly and it's not moving around. Now, you would have seen in the gullwing video, you'd understand how this whole frame is mounted to the vehicle, that there's a whole subframe and all that stuff. But now having this system and having the subframe opens up this little bit of space here. And I like to keep little pouches of things here. I've got some basic tools, uh, all like the kind of wrench sizes for accessories on the roof rack, uh, radial cup protectors, all of that stuff, everything is in here. I've got bungees, I've got ratchet straps, I've got um, tow ropes, <laughs> power accessories, um, backup things for, you know, the, you know, for the little lithium power box, all of that stuff. One thing that I didn't manage to accomplish in time with this build and, you know, with the, with the whole box and everything, because I am in the process of selling the vehicle, um, was finalizing the dual battery system. And what I used to use in, well, I still have it, but in Botswana, I used the big green box from National Luna, which has got their 25 amp DC to DC system. I haven't been, I haven't put that back in here because with the new drawers and, and the cupboards and stuff, it's not really designed to fit in, in there. You, all you would need to do now essentially is underneath that cupboard, um, I would put a little battery box, just a, a little metal battery box. You can get them, pick them up from front runner. They're pretty generic. Um, and then within that, I would just put a 105 amp hour lithium battery, connect that to the DC to DC National Lunar inside the cupboard is where I'd put it inside the gullwing box. Um, and then I'd run all the wires and stuff through the box. So that would be kind of kept there really nicely. You could have yourself a little inverter in the cupboard uh, for, you know, plugging in normal things, but you could also have, with that DC to DC, you can have their National Lunar out outlets. So all the USB plugs and things that you would need to kind of, you know, power all your accessories. So another addition that I would have made um, if I was keeping the vehicle and would really make this quite crazy is I would do another gullwing on the other side. Um, just to have an additional space. This one here would be a little kitchen unit and this one here would be all the power stuff. So that would be very cool. Um, so then when it comes to speaking of power and dual battery and stuff like that, obviously the DC to DC would be charging the auxiliary battery. But when you come to camp and you're busy setting up and stuff, what I have is I've got a flexo power. So this is a flexible solar panel. So you can see there and it folds out quite big, it's 150 watts, and I've seen some pretty good power output on this guy. So this will easily, in you know, good light, will run the fridge and charging and all that stuff. I've seen about seven to eight amps out of it. So that's pretty good. National Lunar fridges will usually run at about two to two and a half amps. Um, so you've got plenty of overhead space for charging and powering other stuff. So I think that's really great. Now on this side here, on the door, there's a very primitive <laughs> drop down table. This was something I worked on at the Bush Tech kind of workshop a little bit, and we are busy working on making a proper one. So this, this is just a very rough template, but you know, we've gone for a carpeted board that's bolted into the door using all the original holes. And then we've got just this very simple little drop down table and it's just kind of all held together at the moment with this bungee. It's temporary, but you know what? If I had to keep waiting for the final products, the walk around would never happen. So then, like I said over here, we've got, now we've got a whole bunch of our other stuff here. So generally what I would do is I will travel with my clothing bag. This comes out when I get to a campsite. Uh, maybe another backpack or clothing bag. And then, that would either go into the front seat when you arrive at your campsite, so it clears up this whole space. And then you've got access to your other sort of cooking things, cups, plates, bowls, all of that stuff in here. And then, you know, I do pots and pans and stuff in the other one and some dry food. So I'll have like pastas and, and things like that in there. So this is a, a system I find works really, really well. It's very simple and it utilizes the draw system to the kind of best of its abilities and keeps all your space neat. Now, before the gullwing, I used to have all my electronics kind of charging down here and those cables would get in the way of the door, they'd get in the way of the fridge. Luckily, I don't have to worry about that any longer. 
So I think that gives you a good rundown, just so you, you might not be able to see on these cameras, but I'll show you a closer shot. There is the front runner expander chairs in here. I've just got two little M6 eye hooks there, and I've got a front runner stratchet kind of connecting it all together and pulling that nice and tight so it doesn't move around when driving. Those are pretty much the only seats that can fit in the Jimny. <laughs> they are comfortable, they can handle uh, heavy weight, and they are, they've been really good for me. They've, they've, they're just very heavy. That's the only downside I would say. And they can be a little bit clumsy sometimes. But otherwise, that is the back of the vehicle. It's a very simple setup, but it works really, really well. Okay, so there's been a couple little tweaks to the interior of the vehicle since my How I Pack My Jimny video. And one thing that I haven't changed for sure is my Tackler seat covers. They've been super invaluable. They look brand new and I've done some pretty rough stuff in these things and they're looking surprisingly good still. So I love the little details of, you know, embroidery of the Rome Overlanding logo and things like that. And this is also, this fabric won't let any water through. So it's actually, it's been really cool. There's been times where I've been shooting in the rain and I've been drenched. I just get in the car and I go. So that's been really nice. And also having the tack mats inside here, giving full kind of coverage underneath the pedals and for when you're coming in and out, whether you're in sandy conditions, muddy conditions, whatever, it keeps everything pretty damn clean. So that's been super invaluable as well on the vehicle. Now, little accessories that I have. I've got my first aid, sorry for the noise, my little first aid kit. And this is a Blue Ridge Overland first aid kit with the headrest mount that just sticks on there. And uh, let's get inside and let me show you some of the really cool little things. Okay, so yeah, the inside, there's been some changes. So you guys may have seen my review of the Garmin Overlander. Now this I've got attached here to a little um, ram mount, which I've actually bolted into the holes in the vehicle. So that actually works really well. That mounts there nicely. I've got the cell phone over here that you guys have seen and you know about. Obviously you've got to have your GoPro because how else can you afford all these accessories? Um, <laughs> again, I've got a uh, ram mount suction cup into a short arm into a little GoPro mount. And then I've got the GoPro is actually in a little small rig cage. Um, so I can mount my microphone and all of that stuff. I also have another Blue Ridge Overland um, little pouch here, which I can put water bottles and all sorts of stuff in. It works really well. Up here, I've got my new Olite M2 Warrior Pro lives in here at the moment. It's busy charging in the back. And then I've got another Blue Ridge Overlanding um, visor little cover here. And that essentially gives me some Moly straps here and a pouch where I keep, you know, my stickers and stuff or when I meet people <laughs> so that I've got some stickers for them. And yeah, that kind of summarizes the inside here. Um, let me swing around to the other side and show you one last thing that side and then we can wrap this video up. Okay, so you've got to have your little headlamp on your headrest. That's just has to happen. And then there's a couple little details in here, uh, little leather accents and things like that, which were done by Geordie Jimny over in the UK. Uh, I'll show you some close-up shots of those. There's one here for the grab handle, there's ones for the handles on the door, and there's one that goes over the handbrake. And they've been a really nice little touch to the vehicle, and I actually had a lot of compliments on them. So I just want to say thanks to Geordie for sending those out to me. They've been really cool. One last little thing. So hidden down here in my little cubby, uh, to go with the Garmin Overlander, is the little Garmin InReach Mini. This is now my little satellite communicator. So when I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I can still keep in touch with everybody back at home, keep in touch with my insurance company and all of those cool things. So this has been a really nice little piece of kit to add and I can't wait for the next adventure where I can actually put these little guys to use. Hopefully not in an emergency though. I know this has been one of the videos you guys have been waiting for and I hope I managed to explain everything that's going on on this vehicle. 
And for those of you that don't know, this vehicle is now officially for sale. There is a link below in the description which will kind of uh, send you to the for sale page for the Jimny and you can kind of see all the bits and bobs that are going with it. But for anybody who is interested or wants to know anything more about any of these other products, um, I have put all the links in the description below for you to go and check out all of the products and go and see. Some of them will be Amazon affiliate links, so I will earn a small commission if you buy through those links, which will be really cool. Um, but yeah, otherwise guys, you know, one of my things that I've really appreciated about this build is getting to work with some of my dream companies, especially getting to test everyone's products. And a lot of the stuff I try to, I try to represent South African made products as much as I can. And there's some serious quality out here in South Africa. The products are top notch and they, they're designed to stand the test of time. They're designed to withstand Africa and what Africa can throw at it. And I'd be really lucky going forward on the next build to have any one of these sponsors backing me again. So look, I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing all the adventures with this Jimny, following the build, all of that stuff. If you're new and this is the first time you're watching a Rome Overlanding video, I really encourage you to head to the main page, subscribe. There's loads of videos over the past almost two years now of the journey of this little vehicle. And if this video has interested you at all and the way that I've built this vehicle has interested you at all, the next build is gonna be beginning as soon as this vehicle gets sold. And that is gonna be a whole new journey. So I hope you guys are gonna hang around and you're gonna tune in and watch. So please consider liking the video, subscribing, and let me know what you thought of the ultimate micro overlander down below in the comments. Is it your cup of tea? Do you think it's a bit too much? Do you think it's a bit too little? No pun intended. <laughs> I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on the build and I'd love to hear what you would want me to build next. But anyways, thank you so much for joining me on this video and watching this. And I will see you guys on the next episode of Rome Overlanding. Cheers.